we can now detect features in almost any images using Dino V2. In this video, I will talk about what is feature detection and feature matching, go over Dino V2, why use it, how does Dino V2 work, and jump into a code demo where we'll see how we'll do feature matching with our Tesla on the right, as well as many other examples. Code and doc will be available on my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So what is feature detection? Feature detection is used to find specific parts of the image that can be used to track over time. So ideally, some properties that we look for is that it's invariant to rotation, scale, and translation. So common classical feature detection methods include things like surf, sift, orb, brief, and fast. But all of these are sparse feature detection. So I talked about it in my videos previously in my OpenCV Python playlist. But one of the main things about Dino V2 is like by nature, it's going to be a dense feature detector. But we can easily downsample it and then make it a sparse feature detector since it's easy to go from dense to sparse, but not the other way around. So what is feature matching? So once you get the features by using your feature detector, the idea of matching is to match the feature between two images. And typically, these two images will be different views. So common methods that are used is using the k nearest neighbors to find the best match. Usually, you use distance as your metric. But some applications of feature matching could include AR, VR, reconstruction, or image matching and finding. If you want to find, like let's say, a picture of a cat and your phone, you could use this sort of same method to do feature matching to find the best match. I also talk about it in a few of my videos here, so you could go ahead and check it out if you're new to feature matching. So what is Dino V2? So Dino V2, there's a paper that Meta AI came out with. It's called Learning Robust Visual Features Without Supervision. So one of the key parts to Dino V2 is the robustness. So we talked about it previously, like invariant to rotation, scale, and all of that. So that's really what the robustness means. So here we take a look at the example of a video that we looked at in the very beginning of this dog. So if you see all of these colors, the idea of these colors is that these are uh, visual features that you see. And we'll be going over a little bit more detail about how we actually get these uh, visual features later on. But the idea now is that you can see that this dog here, we could get features of this dog based off of these colors that we see. So the Dino V2, they come in a lot of different uh, models, up from 21 million parameters up to 1 billion parameters. So you can see that these are all the different models that are available for download. Uh, so why use Dino V2? So one of the main things is that it's self-supervised learning, so you don't need images with labels. So we all know how painful labeling can be. And you can learn features from unseen images. We don't need to do any fine tuning. And a lot of these applications, you can actually use the backbone in a lot of your computer vision architectures. So there's a lot of diverse applications for Dino V2. Even though this video, our main purpose is to look at feature detection and feature matching, but Dino V2 in general can be used for a lot of different things. So you have things such as depth estimation. So if you want to find each pixel of the image and find out how far it is from you, this is some of the applications. You could use it for semantic segmentation. So if you want to crop out the background from the foreground, this is what Dino V2 could be used for as well. You also have instance retrieval. So this is the example I said, if you wanted to find a picture of a cat on your phone, or if you wanted to do a efficient Google search of finding similar images, this is what instance retrieval is. You also have dense matching. So dense matching is looking at pixel by pixel to see which one is the match between the two. The sparse matching is more of a bigger parts of the image. So it's more like SIF, SURF, and all of those classical feature detections. So sparse matching will look at not each individual pixel, but just parts of the image. So you could see here that these are some examples that they took for uh, extracting features of various types of images. And you can see how it does in these examples. So we have a lot of images of like horses, dogs, uh, basically a bunch of animals in this example here. And here you can see that you can also do feature matching among very unrelated things. So 
a train and a truck, right? This one you could do some matching. You could do a bus and a truck. You could also figure out some matching. Elephant, a real elephant, and a statue of an elephant. You could have elephants of different views. So you can see how powerful it is in terms of matching. Things are very similar, yet the views is very different. You could still do matching in those cases. And these would be good for things like the instance retrieval that we talked about. So here are some more examples in better detail. So you could take a look at all the features that we can gather using Dino V2. And you can see that it does a very good job in you know, getting the foreground and background and getting the details of the pixels, as you can see. So later on, we'll be taking a look at the details of this in our example. So how does Dino V2 work? So Dino V2, everything nowadays seems to be based off of the vision transformer. Ever since we took a dive in large language models, a lot of interest has been um, given into how can we do things with transformers for vision. So the idea is that you have uh, patch and position embeddings here. So you break up an image here into different parts. And then here you have uh, pretty much like a linear vector. And you do a linear projection of your patches, and then you pass it into your transformer encoder. And then you pass it in here to the MLP head, and then here you get some class. So here's the architecture of the transformer encoder here. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about it, but the idea is that the Dino V2 really focuses on how it trains the uh, VIT transformer here, the VIT, sometimes that's what people call it. Um, so they focus a lot on the, the training that they did. Um, but you could go ahead and check out the paper. An image is worth 16 by 16 words if you want to see more details about transformers. So they use the property of PCA, so principal component analysis. So this is a linear, lin linear algebra concept that they use where, like in 2D, for example, if you had a cluster of points, the idea of getting the principal components is if you imagine this is like a ellipse, you would find the two major axes, which is the two dominant directions of all of these points. And same thing in 3D. So if you go from 2D to 3D, you have a ellipsoid with three axes that would be the principal axis of your ellipsoid. So if you could stretch your mind to multiple dimensions, you might have um, all of these points, which are tokens. So you can see here that uh, here we're going to be looking at a Tesla model. So the idea is you pass this image into a model, you're going to get some tokens, and you're going to run PCA. And in this case, we're actually going to be running the three dimensions. So the three dimensions will be RGB. So that's what each of these values that you see here in these images are RGB values that correspond to the principal components, principal component analysis of your tokens. So. Even though we're dealing with uh, 3D here with RGB, you could expand this to any dimension you want, uh, depending on your application, also using PCA because it's a linear, 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 linear algebra concept that's very expandable. Getting a little bit of a tongue twister today. <laughs> but now let's go ahead and jump into the coding example. So you can see here, this is the architecture of our program. We're going to have two images. We're going to get the image passed pass it into our read image, get our images, go into the extract features function, use our features, pass it into feature matching, get our matches, and then show our matching results. So that's the flow of our function here. So here you can see that we have our main program. So we have our run feature match. I'm going to run it through different test cases. We have our red Tesla, uh, China uh, scenery, a Tesla bot and another Tesla bot. So these two examples here I show um, in the first case, the Tesla bot pictures are very close to each or very far apart in, the, in, in terms of how, how long it is between the two shots. And then here is a closer shot where the camera just moves a very small amount so you can see how the performance differs between the two cases. So let's go ahead and run our program here. Okay, so this is the example that we're running with. So you can see on the left and right are two images of a red Tesla. And I've downsampled the image so that um, we're not looking at so many features at once. But you can see here that in general, the features that we find, the colors seem to have the same gradient that we see from green to orange. Um, but you can see 
in, in this area here on the right, uh, this area seems to be more purple, so some of that is not as similar. So you can see that it could potentially be matching to purple regions up here. So let's take a look at how the feature matching works for this example. So here you can see this is our uh, first example here. So image one, you can see that. Um, and what I've done here is I've downsampled the features as well. So I'm not plotting so many lines at once, but Let's take a look at what areas of this did well. So uh, if we zoom in here, this is our first instance. You can see that uh, the ones that did well, I would say, would be, let's see. I would say a lot of these didn't do too well here. Um, yeah, this one didn't do too well. You can see this green, this green line here, if I zoom in a little bit. Um, there's a green line here that gets getting around the tire so this one is also getting around the tire so that one did well so you can see that this one corresponds to uh, this one here so you can see that the slider green one seems to be a good match so I would say this this particular example did okay uh, here's another instance so what I've done is I've shifted the different instances that we're looking at so you can see here uh, some of them didn't do too well uh, the front of the car bumper, that part, some of it seemed to do okay here. And if I zoom out again, you can see that um, the blue, yes, the dark blue line here seemed to do pretty well. You can see that they both got near the edge of the car. And we take a look at the features here. You could see a better view of the actual colors and which one they match to. But you can see that some of the ones that we saw earlier, you can see it here as well. And here's another example that we ran. So let's see which one of these did well here. Um, you can see that here, the bottom, the front of the car, some of these points, they seem to match. And you can see this green one is kind of on the side of the car. So again, I'm using basic like um, nearest neighbors, but you could do things like the non-maximal uh, suppression to get rid of some of the noise. As well as you could try to have the two views to be closer to each other so that um, there's not as much change between picture and picture. But basically, you could see here that you seem to get some matches and some not. So you could refine the algor algorithm to make it work a little bit better. Now, let's take a look at another example. This is the one with the China scenery. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so these are the two images that I'm dealing with. You can see that these are two views of the buildings, slightly shifted. You can see in general that the pixels on bottom are orange and pinkish, whereas the top is like more green and blue. But you can see that some of the parts are a little bit different. So you can see that in this particular example, it might struggle doing the matching. So let's take a look at some of the instances that uh, we're looking at. So here you can see that most of these seem to be pretty bad. Um, one, one thing that you could try doing too is if you know that your camera is along the same plane, what you could do is try to segment or or scan it like region by region so that the, the top and you don't compare the top and bottom of the two images. So that would help you uh, match between the same regions of your image. So in this particular case, it didn't do too well. And you can see that uh, the color seems to be going all over the place. And it's by the nature of how the features turned out in these pictures, you can see that a lot of the colors seem to be a little bit disorganized. And if we take a look at this other example here with my points shifted a little bit, you can see that um, seems to be right here, uh, doesn't seem to do too well in this one either. Uh, some parts that seem to get it is this light pink one. The relative area seems to be okay. Um, but other than that, not too many good ones. And again, you could play around with the image resolution too, since some of the resolution will affect the results as well. Um, here you can see that this one, not too good. Yeah, most of these here didn't do too well, I would say. Except for this purple one here, it seems to get around the same area of the building. So this one seemed to do OK. Now let's take a look at the Tesla bot example. So let's go ahead and run that one. So you can see this is a Tesla bot example here. And you can see that um, 
Here, the Tesla bot seems to be pretty green here, so that's a good sign. And you can see that the general, the Cybertruck, seems to have similar color distribution as well. And you can see here, these are some of the matches that we see. You can see that um, some features here. So this one didn't do too well. Um, you can see that parts of the green here, yeah, also a little bit off. So the general area is correct, but the exact points here seem to be having a little bit of a hard time. So this particular example didn't do as great as I expected. Um, but here are some other points that we're looking at here. You can see that um, this one did OK. Yeah, you can see in general, it's some parts are a little bit off. This purple one seems to be getting near the top of the cyber truck. So that one did OK. Uh, let's take a look at this view here with the features. So you can see that some of them are matching. And here's another example. So you can see, let's see. Yeah, the green of the Cybertruck, this part, the front. So those two did OK. So you can see that some parts are good, some parts are bad. But like, like the other examples I talked about, you might be able to do some refinement. So now let's run the last example, which is a little bit closer. In, the, in terms of where we are in time when the two shots were taken. So you can see here that um, this, this one here, you can see the color distribution is much closer because if you notice where the Tesla bot is standing near the Cybertruck, it's very close, not exactly the same scene, but it's just slightly shifted. And you can see the color distribution is much more similar between the two images. So ideally, if you have the, the scenes very close to each other in time, then ideally you have a much better match. So let's go ahead and take a look how it's going to behave in these other scenes. So uh, let's see which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, you can see the, perp the this like dark red seems to get both on top of the chest. Uh, this blue line seems to get the side of the Tesla uh, tr cyber truck. Um, this green one here seems to get near the front of the tire. So you can see this one is already doing much better. And if we look at it in the features view, you can see it a little bit clearer. Now here's another example. You can see uh, this light gray one on top seems to get near the top of the cyber truck. Uh, this blue one here is getting the, the right cyber truck. Purple one line here on the bottom is getting around the feet. So again, you can see that this one, because the two views are very similar, it's starting to match very well. And here's the view of it in the feature space. Now, uh, one more example, you can see that, OK, it's getting the foot. That one's good. Uh, the front tire, I think it swapped the two tires. The points, a few points in front of the Cybertruck. Um, here's the arm, which that point it missed. So yeah, it got some points, some points it didn't. But overall, if you look at it in the feature space, you can see that we're getting a few matches, which is pretty good. All right, so if you want my code and doc, it's available on my website at kevinworobotics.com. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.